Okay, Shalom. Wong. I want to start giving all praises due to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah, Rakal Kadar, respect and honor to all you teachers, apostles, and elders who taught and preached this word, this gospel of truth. This is another episode of Glad Tiding Ministry, and this is Prince Shemai Basar. Okay, so what I want to go over, um, I don't know the title of it yet, but I like to start it with saying, What made things change? Simple. What made things change? And we're going to start off with, um, Ezra chapter 1 verse 3. Let me go to Ezra. What made things change? Okay, here we go. <clears throat> and I'm going to start from the top just so you can read. Just so you can get to understand where I'm going with this. And I'm going to start at Ezra 1. It says, now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be, be fulfilled. The Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, the king of Persia, that he made a, pro a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and put it also in writing, saying, Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, the Lord God of heaven have given me all the kingdoms of the earth and have charged me to build him and house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah, who is there among you of all his people. His God be with him and let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and build the house of the Lord, the God of Israel. He is the God, which is in Jerusalem. And I'm reading that for verbatim. Okay. So remember, what made things change? I don't know if that's going to be it, though. I'll, you'll see at the end. Now let's go to Ezra 4. And that's, let's go to Ezra 4, 1 to 3. <coughs> now when the adversaries of Judah and Benjamin heard that the children of the captivity built the temple unto the Lord, unto the Lord, the Most High of Israel, then they came to, Jeru to Zer Zerubbabel and to the chief of the fathers and said unto them, Let us build with you. Here's the point. For we seek your power, we seek your God as you do, and we do sacrifice unto him since the days of Asa Hadan king of Asor, which brought us up hither. But Zerubbabel and Joshua and the rest of the chief of the fathers of Israel said unto them, You have nothing to do with us to build a house unto our power, but we ourselves together will build unto the Lord our power of Israel, as King Cyrus, the king of Persia, have commanded us to do. Now listen to this. Then the people of the land weakened their hands of the people of Judah and troubled them in building. Now real quick, you ever heard of the saying where they say, wait till you finish it before you tell, share other things to other people? That's true. And that's an illustration of this. But that's not the point. That's just the detail that I'm giving you. But you'll see that when you're working on something, keep it to yourself until it's fulfilled. Because you might have people that might want to weaken that. Weaken your hands. Stir it up. Mess it up for you. So wait until you, you know, till you damn near got it done and it's working before you tell anybody. And even then when you tell somebody you got haters. That's the same thing we're going through today as scoffers. Okay? You can use that as a term. Scoffers and mockers. You know what I'm saying? Because what we're trying to do spiritually, we're trying to spread this gospel to our people, you know, to the, to the assembly of the elect, to wake them up, and to the one-third, the first fruits, you know what I'm saying, to bring them in this fold, which the Lord is going to bring them in this fold, to let them know the good news. The good news is going to be famine and death. Two-thirds of our people are going to die. Yeah, well, how is that good news? That is good news. Okay, because that good news is that the people, our, our, we're not going to no longer, as Deuteronomy um, 28 brings out, we're no longer going to be, which is in the blessings, we're no longer going to be the tell or the but or the proverb or the byword. We're going to be what? We're going to be the head. And all the blessings in Deuteronomy 28 is going to be fulfilled. That's what we, that's, that was supposed to be our original status. But you could tell that that's not our original status by the condition that we we're in to this day. So that's one detail that I wanted to give to you that before you try to build something or 
anything that you have an idea of, even though we not, even though we know we're not going to last, this earth is not going to be, the earth's going to always be here. But even though things is not going to, um, America is going to be destroyed, Babylon the Great, also the Roman Empire that we're in today, or should I just say the Valley of the Shadows of Death that we're walking in into today, they ain't going to be here that long. The Lord, the, the Lord, that long, the Lord going to destroy this. So that's part of the glad tidings. That's part of the good news. Okay? And no more sickness. And we're going to rule in this kingdom. And guess what? Esau, the nation of Edom, they're going to get drink double the cup for what they've done to us. I have another video, too, that I ran a course earlier about the Black Holocaust in Germany. They did a little skit on YouTube. And I'm going to hit that up later on as part of my video. Okay. Now, I said, so let's just go over that again. But just, but, um... Ezra 4 and 3. But Zerubbabel and Joshua and the rest of the chief of the fathers of Israel said unto them, You have nothing to do with us to build and house unto our power. But we ourselves together will build unto the Lord the most high, the power of Israel, as King Cyrus, the king of Persia, had commanded us. Then the people of the land weakened their hands of the people of Judah and troubled them in building. They tried to throw a black eye in the game, mess it up for them, right? And they hired counsels against them, counselors against them, to frustrate their purpose all the days of Cyrus, king of Persia, even unto the reign of Darius, king of Persia. See? You see what I'm saying? Now, my point is, what made things change? My point that I'm bringing out is that <clears throat> if the nations never had anything to do with them back then, they still don't have nothing to do with it back um, still to this day. And we have to, I mean, see a lot of people today like churches, they try to sugarcoat that it's not joining hand in hand. We do know that the nations have their own power, their own God. Okay? But ours is the supreme being, all I see. Okay? You don't get no higher than us because that's the nation of Israel. That's the children of Yasha Allah. That's their power. That's their creator. And we don't share it with them. And people try to use the Bible to say that we should come together. But the, the Bible really speaks about separation. A segregation, whether you like it or not. You know what I'm saying? I'm just here to give you the message. The, this Bible was made for the Hebrews, the Israel, okay? And they're not going to all be dark-skinned people. They're going to all have different nationalities and different shades of skin. So it's not a prejudice type of thing. And this is not a religion. This is a culture. Once again, this is not a religion. This is a culture. This is a way of life. That's why this book was made for us. Okay, and only for the elect of Israel from the beginning to the ending. It's always about Israel. Okay, it's not about anybody else. Now we're gonna get more scriptures speaking than that. So let's give Psalms 147 19 and 20. Just because I really love you, do 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 do. Just because I really love you. Psalms 147, 19 and 20. Psalms 147, 19 and 20. Now, you got to accept this and you got to think, with logic and it says he showed his word unto Jacob that's the 12 tribes of Israel when you look at Revelation 144,000 for the tribe of Benjamin 144,000 for the tribe of Judah 144,000 for the tribe of Issachar all, all the way to 144,000 for the tribe of Gad 144,000 for the tribe of Manasseh it ain't 144,000 for the tribe of um Germany, so-called Germany, 144,000 for the tribe of Canaanite. 140, no, don't say that. It's specific. Okay? He showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He have not dealt so with any nation. And as for, he have not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. That's simple. Clear. Okay? There's no confusion about that. 
All right. This is the word of the Lord. That's if you accept it and that's if you believe it. Okay. So we got that one. Let's go to Psalms 103. So my the beginning that I opened this with, what changed? Where is, where, is, <clears throat> where in the Bible does that change that we all come together as a whole? See, if you read this Bible intently and go over it and, and, and pray for understanding, you will see that. And at one time, I wasn't able to see that either. Because I was part of the world as, um, as far as thinking that we should all be one and we should all work together. But one of the brothers, one of the brothers did a, a, um, a video and it dawned on me that, do you know it is a commandment? It is a commandment. It's not a choice. It is a commandment that um, you don't deal with your enemies. Okay? And let me show you. Psalms 103, verse 7. I'm going to get to that. He made known his ways. He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. Those acts was those, the statutes and commandments. It wasn't given for the whole nation. Okay? Now, let's go to Deuteronomy 7. <clears throat> Deuteronomy 7 We're going to start from verse 1 And listen intently It says when the Lord thy power Shall bring thee into a land Where thou goest to possess it And it cast out many nations before thee Now when you get a chance You look it up your first The Hittites, the Girgashites, and the Amorites And the Canaanites, the Pezzasites And the Hivites, and the Jubasites Seven nations greater and mightier than thou Those were some of them of the South Africans Um Canaanites or whatever they were Canaanite but the point is they wasn't from the nation of Israel and that's a clear distinction with what we're reading okay and you have to understand when we read this why is it like like how are we looking at our creator like how do we really see him you know I was thinking about that like how do we see we create see and that's Christianity to me and Christianity makes you dumb deaf and blind because how do you really see your creator when it says, read with Rosh, it says, And when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor show mercy unto them. Okay, so the Lord said, kill them. S utterly smite them. Now, aren't they people just like the nation of Israel? Aren't they people just like the nation of Israel? Didn't they have children? Didn't they have babies? Didn't they have mothers, father, parents? Wasn't they a lineage of people as well? But then the Lord says, kill them, utterly kill them. So how are we looking at our creator, Yahweh, and a son named Yahweh, who you ignorantly call God and Jesus? That's the Hebrew name. How are we really looking at the Most High? Because, see, when you're in the churches, you look at him in the weak point of view you look at him as a weak figure you got to look at him as a weak figure you're not looking at him as a a, a a mighty figure because you would embrace what he said he said kill them utterly spike them that's a family they got babies they got children they got mothers they got fathers just like the nation of israel but he chose one particular people better uh, other than the others he loved one particular people better than the others that's the glad tidings ministry that's the glad tidings that's the good news that the Lord is coming back and he's cleansing this earth for the elect of Israel, but it's really for the nation of Israel as a whole. Some will die here on two-thirds, but the other, the, the, the ones that die here, they're going to come back on the other side. But it's all about the nation of Israel. Read some more. And when the Lord thy God shall deliver thee before thee, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor show mercy unto them. Neither shall thou make marriages with them, See, so the churches say we should come together. We should join hand in hand. We should have a fire. God loves everybody, does he? 
I'm reading something that's saying something totally different. Do you niggas read? Or you need something that's feel good. And that's what's wrong. That's why the world is breaking down right now. Because what's being fed to the people is feel good. Things that make you feel good. But things that make you feel good is not the truth. I'll say it again. Things that make you feel good is not the truth. You want the itching ears. Itching ears, things that make you feel good. But feel good things is not good for you. Pepsi soda might taste good. But it's good for you. A lot of sugar. It tastes sweet, but is it good for you? And that reminds me of a scripture. It tastes sweet, but it goes down and becomes bitter. And that's this word. When we embrace this word, yeah, I'm an Israelite. Yeah, we're going to kick ass. But then you see the turmoil and the wickedness of our people that the things that we've done. Time and time again. Time and time again. Okay? We have a zeal according to... We have a zeal for the most high, but not according to knowledge. Because we want to do our own goddamn thing. That's why we're being oppressed and stomped down and killed in the street. Because we don't want to listen and abide to the commandments. Alright? Read on. Neither shall I make marriages with them. Don't marry your son with them. So, come on, man. Don't have your son marry a, 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 um, a Edomite. Don't have your son... Marrying a so-called China man, which is real nationalities of Moab. Don't have your son or your daughters marrying of the other nations, but in the nation of Israel. Now, the so-called Hispanic, Ephraim, are our people, Puerto Ricans, okay? Even the um, the so-called Mexicans are our people, even though they don't think so, okay? But we are a people. We are for that tribe. And we, 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 we have that same kind of vibe. That frequency when we see each other. But you know what happened to us? The devil, he's a deceiver. Separation by manipulation. I'll say it again. No separation by manipulation. I'll say it again. No separation by manipulation. We being manipulated to hate each other and say that we from some different other nationality. But nigga, we all the same people. We just got different shades of brown. Okay? And you notice, I came, I originally was, um, I'm, I'm, I lived in a lot of places like Brooklyn, Queens. So I grew up with Spanish people, so-called Spanish people, but they was the, the children of um, Ephraim, children of Joseph. Those are our people. And we chill with each other, you know what I'm saying? We have a good time with each other. And we feel the same pain and oppression as each other. Is that true or false? Is that true or false? And when the Lord God shall deliver thee before thee, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor show mercy unto them. Neither shall they make marriages with them. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his, to his son, nor his daughter shall thou take for, unto thy son. For they will, t and it, it was a reason why. It was a reason why the Lord is saying this. For they will turn away thy son from following me. So the nations... And the different heathens, because they are heathens, they will make you turn away from following the Most High. And embrace what they would give you as something power, as something, instead of you having your power, and you being your full energy and your full power, it would break you down. They would bring you down, they would give you stuff, mix you up with pork, things that make you break the commandments. So therefore you lose, you, you lose your blessings. You, you won't be under that protection or under that umbrella. Okay? Um... They'll make you serve other gods and idols. Okay? They'll make you do spiritual fornication. They'll make you do adultery. Okay? All the things that the Lord gave them to you. It's a culture. It's a way of life for you. Because he said, if you don't do that, they will have you turn and serve other gods. One of the examples, and it's been many examples, King Solomon on the left hand side. Okay? He started off great. And even, well, I won't state that because I think that that's, um, I'll say it, but sometimes it's a little too much and I like to give baby milk, you know, to a lot of people that don't believe that. But King Solomon was Jehoshua, okay, and I know you don't believe that, but that's another story, okay. But King Solomon, he went off. What about Samson? Believing in that woman and having her chains and cutting it, he made it. What about the prophet? 
that had strictly directions to go a certain way and come back a certain way. He had strictly instructions. What's that scripture? It's better. Keeping the commandments is better than sacrifice. Something like that. So it says, let's go back to four. For they will turn away thy son from following me, that you may serve other gods. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly. See? Read on. But verse five. But thus shall you deal with them. You shall destroy their altars. Break down their images and cut down their groves and burn their graven images with fire. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy power. The Lord thy power have chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. Above, above, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. That's it. That's it. And let me give you Matthews. Because I think it's 1524. So what the things change? We got commandments not to deal with them, man. We got a straight commandments from the Lord. And if you have faith in the Lord, it goes hand in hand. Okay? You have faith and you have instructions not to deal with those nations. Now, I don't mean to be indignant. You know what I'm saying? But you can see say hi you can be cordial with them because the scriptures also say be peaceful with all men if possible the scriptures also say be peaceful with all men if possible if possible so that only means you go in there and say to the devil and say look at that stinking moab and all that other stuff it just says don't live their life don't eat with them don't deal with them if you have to work business that's different okay but it ain't no need hanging out with them and, and stuff like that that is a commandment so think about this Every time you niggas think you got a good best friend on the side, that's a Moab, or that's a Chinaman, that's a Jap, that's okay, am I right, or anything like that, and they might be good people. Nope, I stated that wrong. They might be, yeah, they might be decent people as far as ethics. I wouldn't even say ethics, damn. They might be decent people, just all right people. They're treating you with cordial. They're treating you okay. But remember, there is a commandment that don't, Engage with them only if you have to do a workplace in and out. That's it. You shouldn't be going to none of their parties, you shouldn't be dancing none of their functions, and none of that shit. When you do that, you're breaking the commandments. Um, and then I'm gonna end it with this, man. Now, all you believers in so called Christ, okay, his name is Yahweh. So. All you believe is to say, I believe in Christ. All right? I believe in them. Or oh, like, they like to say, in the blood of Jesus. In the blood of Jesus, I am blessed. I am saved. In the blood of Jesus. These niggas one of the worstest people ever, man. 1524. Where do things change? Now, I gave you mostly in the Old Testament. For some of you like to use separation by manipulation using certain parts. Oh, this brother only used the Old Testament. Now, I'm going to give you out of who you believe, who you say, who you who you testify that you believe in, who you ignorantly call Jesus Christ. His name is Yahweh. 1524. But he answered. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the Lord's sheep of the house of Israel. Read it again. I am not sent but unto the Lord's sheep of the house of Israel. We're, we're, there's many different nationalities in this world. We're in the New Testament. Okay? We're in the New Testament. And what did it say? But, I am, but he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the Lord's sheep of the house of Israel. What did it change yet? It's always about Israel. So on that note, I hope you was edified. Welcome to another episode of Glad Tiding Ministry. Prince Shaman. Shalom.